today is on a Monday and this is the day that the Lord has made that we will rejoice <coughs> and be glad in it. How are you and where are you watching us from? Kindly talk to us through our social media channels. We have All Time TVKE on our Facebook page. On Instagram is All Time TVKE. And also you can see us on Twitter, All Time TVKE. And also in TikTok, All Time TVKE. All our social media handles, it is at All Time TVKE. Now join us today and also we are live on our All Time TV. Now tell a friend to tell a friend. I told you that today, being on a Monday, 8 p.m. we are going to have a special edition and I'm going to have a guest in the studio and the guest in the studio soon and in a few minutes I will introduce to you our guest today on Monday but for now I want us to start the show with a word of prayer let's pray Father, in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you, we worship you, we give you glory, we honor you, and we exalt your holy name. We declare there is no any other name that is greater than yours. We declare that there is no any other power or authority that is beyond your power, Jesus Christ. Now, Holy Spirit of God, come, we welcome you in this studio. We welcome you in this place, O Holy Spirit of God. Come and take control. Come and guide us. Come and show us the way. Come and tell us what to say in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father, we pray and we believe that, oh Lord, you have taken control. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of this show. We give you glory and we honor you. And it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we do pray and believe. Let's say, Amen and Amen and Amen. So thank you so much. Welcome. And I have a guest in the studio today, being on a Monday. Uh, Today, I'm bringing you a prophet, a well-known prophet, a man of God, all the way from New York. Uh, most of you have seen him in s different occasions, and I am bringing to you prophet Dr. Thomas Manton IV, all the way from New York. Welcome. Glad to be here. Well, thank you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, that's a few ways. Amen. <laughs> Mungu ni wema kila wakati. Yes, welcome so much in our studios. This is All Time TV, and uh, we have been waiting for you and waiting to hear what the Lord is saying tonight. Praise. Yes, so our viewers, this is uh, Dr. Thomas Manton, and he is a prophet. And as we know, uh, is that uh, in the body of Christ, we have fivefold ministries. And uh, to make sure uh, you find that we have the prophet, we have the pastor, we have the teachers, we have the evangelists, and also we have the apostles. So you find that in the ministry of a prophecy, this is where so many people don't understand. And this is where you and me have a lot of questions in. And this is me, uh, me and you where we find ourselves like, uh, is this a true prophet or is this not a true prophet? How can I gauge a true prophet? Or how can I tell what God is talking about uh, for Kenya and maybe for the body of Christ through who? Who is this person who is true? So today I'm presenting to you a man of God. Let us look at that uh, fold of prophecy today. And today I am going to present to you Dr. Manton who has prophesied prophecies uh, before that came to pass in Kenya. <coughs> he prophesied about uh, pres presidential elections. Now unapati kwamba during Mwaikibake wakati ambapo alikuwa naingia, he prophesied about that. He prophesied about uh, the, the former president Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta and he also prophesied about the uh, incumbent president. And also he prophesied about about some other things like the growth in tourism <coughs> sector in Kenya, development of several other Kenyan cities, and we have seen it happen. And also, he has uh, he prophesied about the growth in airport and airline growth in expansions, and these things has come to happen. So I know you have heard about prophecies, and I know some of you, as I say, that I have a prophet in the studio. You like really, Eve. Are you for real? Yes, for real. I have a prophet, a man of God. But today, he's not going to talk more about prophecy. Uh, he will talk about it some other time. Though he will introduce what is prophecy, about a little bit about the office of the prophecy. But then he has a lot to tell us. What is God saying about Kenya and the body of Christ in general in the uh, country of Kenya? So welcome. Say hi to our viewers. and they are waiting for you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
the Lord is um, very clear about how he operates in his word. The way you know the way of God is to know his word. His word is his will. If you leave this Bible aside, you're a foolish person because this is the word of the living God. There's the written word, there's rhema, logos, there's rhema, which is spirit-breathed um, references of things the Holy Spirit already said, and the prophecy should absolutely line up with Scripture, and also um, bring powerful creative forces from heaven to cause things to happen in the earth. A very simplistic definition of prophecy is this. Prophecy is God thinking out loud, telling you what's on his mind. The Holy Spirit is a speaking spirit. He always has something to say. And the thing is, are we hearing him correctly? Amos 3.7 says, Surely the Lord God, the importance of a prophet uh, in the earth, in the church, in the world, under the hand of God, surely the Lord God will do nothing unless he first reveal his secret to his servant, the prophet. Amos 3, 7. And then it says, the scripture says in the next verse that people should echo his voice. The Lord has spoken. Who then can but prophesy? So we see that now also the elders and the people built by the prophesying of the prophet. They were able to create things. So, the power, it's Ezra 6.14. Thank you, Lord. Can we lift our hands and just let the Lord touch us tonight? Because the precious Holy Spirit is brilliant. He's the one that spoke over the, the earth when it was without form and void, and he began to create things. So, the prophetic grace, let me just, let me just really straighten a lot of things out here in a few moments. The prophetic grace will create things. So I don't understand all of this about prophecies, especially in the nation of Kenya. It seems like when it's election time, everybody comes up with their version. And then uh, some will write things like, God is going to destroy humanity. I said, no, 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 you're, you're a devil. You're not speaking correctly. God is here to bless people, not to curse people. Thank you, that's great, that's perfect. He wants to help us. He doesn't want to hurt us. There's no such thing as a prophecy that's going to talk about God is going to cause natural disasters and bring destruction. That's a guy who's off the wall. He needs to be sidelined. Let me tell you, God is good at that too. There's some people that rise up and they say they're prophets and they come up with a lot of things and they say a lot of things. Then all of a sudden you see them beginning to go off the scene and there are a few of them like that. They don't need to be heard. They need to be silenced. They need to be put down. The church needs to pray for the true voice of God. Myself, I have always had the experience since day one that I was a man of the word. Okay? A man of the word of God. This Bible has thousands and thousands of promises, and this is the true doctrine. There's not another doctrine. It's right here. And if the Lord speaks, He's going to speak something that's... You can find Scripture really to go to coincide with every prophetic word that's ever spoken by God. Now, does God say Kenya, Nairobi, Superhighway, New Expressway, New Train Lines, SGR, New Expansions in the Airlines, Tourism, Infrastructures, all kinds of things being developed? Is that in here? No. But it's, it's actually uh found in the scripture that God will build up societies and build up nations and build up peoples. Can you say amen? In the book of Isaiah, we see real power scriptures. Let's look at Isaiah 45 for a second. Isaiah 45 is just uh, a tremendous, if I have it here, I'm in 46, let me go back to 45. 45 says, thus saith the Lord, I'll, have, I'll cause you to subdue nations, and I'll loose the armor of kings to open before you the double doors. This is power, you understand? And I'll make the crooked places straight. I'm skipping through a little bit. I just want to make this emphasis. 
uh, on this, and I'll break in pieces the gates that have held you back. Is that powerful? That means God wants to deliver you. He wants to raise you up. He wants to empower you. And I'll, I'll cut the bars of iron. And then he began to say, I'll bless you. I'll give you treasures from really all kinds of places, even hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I am the Lord, that I, the Lord, who call you even by your own name and the God of Israel. God said, I will even call you by your own name and summon you forth and give you treasures so that you can be blessed. So guess what? Poverty is a curse. Prosperity is a blessing. It's all here. It's all here. Look at Isaiah 60. Let's jump over there. Isaiah 60. Arise and shine for your light has come. You like my bookmarkers? I got Twiga right here. There he is. Okay. This is my Bible bookmarkers. And it says Kenya at the bottom. Isn't that cute? Yeah, it's like your love. Let us say your Twiga. Twiga. Mr. Twiga. And then I got, <laughs> then I got uh, who's this guy? Chewy, right? Am I right? Yes, that is the leopard. The, no, Chira. this is the, the cheetah. Chira, yeah. Chewy, right? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, anyway, I had some lion symbols, but I have to. So it says, Arise and shine, for your light has come. Is this God summoning, summoning you to be bound, cursed, destroyed, hurt, or to be raised up and empowered? Which? So, the voice of the prophet Isaiah went before us was an empowering breakthrough prophet that was speaking prophetic things to break people through and we're continuing in that line. So I like to call Isaiah my great, 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 how many generations? 3,000 years. Great, 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 I'm going to get tired of saying how many greats. Great, great, great uncle in the prophetic, all right? He's my uncle. Isaiah. You have Jeremiah. You have Ezekiel. You have Moses. You have Elijah. All right? Yes. You have Elisha. Mm -hmm. Right? You have Ezra, the teaching priest. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You have the other prophets. You have, they call them the minor prophets. Mm -hmm. Micah and uh, Hosea and uh, Obadiah and the rest of these guys. They weren't minor prophets. They just had smaller books. Mm -hmm. The biggest book was Isaiah. I love Isaiah so much. He has 66 chapters. And... Um, there's 66 books in the Bible, right? So, and Isaiah has 66 chapters. What a powerful thing. And if you read through Isaiah, the early chapters, is a lot of judgment in there because God was mad at the Israelites for what they were doing wrong. They were, he was really mad, okay? But if you get further, like from 50, 43, 45... 46, 48, for Isaiah 48, 17 says, The Lord will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Is that good or bad? It's good. So, so the voice of the prophet will lead people into the garden, will lead people into the beautiful place. God, in the beginning, God made a garden in Eden, and he put Adam there, and he said, Keep it and uh, guard it. And when Adam got restless and began to go out of the garden... The serpent was able to enter, and then he talked to Eve and beguiled Eve. Now, if Adam was there, could the serpent have spoken to Eve, his wife? No. He would have hit it. He would have said, get out of here. Mm -hmm. But he wasn't there. And because of that disobedience, how Adam got out of the way, the whole human race fell, and then we needed to have the last Adam, the second Adam, to come back to Lord Jesus Christ to redeem people back to him. So... Uh, uh, the voice of the Lord walked with Adam in the cool of the day as a physical expression. So the voice of the Lord is a wonderful thing. The Holy Spirit's wonderful. He's not, uh, you know, if people are misguided by people, it's because of man's manipulations. And I want to speak that God will destroy that in the church in Kenya, in the church in the world. People don't need to be led by man. We need to be led by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God will also lead people in, through the prophet, through the pastor, through the evangelist, the true, the true fivefold offices of ministry, if, according to Ephesians 4.11. He'll lead us into all truth. Remember John 8.32 says, You know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And Jesus said what in John 8.31? What did he say? He said, By this you'll know 
my disciples because they continue in my word, which is this. So any true prophet, I'm not here to debate prophet versus prophet versus... Uh, we were having a, a conversation in the, in the boardroom over there, whatever, and I was like, wow, what a question. People really have this problem. And to me, I think it's so sad because I'm far above that. And, 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 and the, the host here asked me, like, how do you know a true prophet from a false one? Or how do you know the true? I said, well, when you're right, it gives you confidence. When you're righteous and you're right, you know you're right, you know. And it's just like the, the wrong is some other, in some other arena. But let's say it does have to be dealt with. I want to commission everybody who's under the sound of my voice, especially if you're a pastor, a preacher, a leader, an evangelist, you need to pray and speak against every false spirit, every wrong voice, and just to silence them and neutralize them, and, and then begin to declare that God will raise up His true voices, His anointed men and women. Can we lift our hands right now? I feel the anointing falling here right now. His true servants of God to be anointed with power, to teach people the right way, to lead them. Psalm 23 talked about the love of God. You will not lack. I'll lead you by the still waters. I'll take you into green pastures. Come on. I will take you. I'll set even a table for you of blessing in the presence of your enemies. Though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you'll feel no evil because my rod and my staff are with you and they'll comfort you. And surely goodness and mercy will follow you all, all the, the days, days of, of your life. life. If you want to hear a prophecy, I just gave one right now from the psalm. Oh, no. Psalm 23. That's, man, I feel the anointing. Oh. That's a prophecy right there. Get in the pulpit, preachers. Listen to, listen to me here. And teach this book. And that is what authenticates you as real. Because God will always back up his word. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says... When you ask things according to my will, I will grant them to you. And Jesus said in John fifteen seven, if you, as you, I don't, you know, it says if you do, because a lot of people don't, but I say for myself, as I abide in him and his words abide in me, I'll ask for what I want and it'll be done for me. Mark eleven twenty three talks about how you can speak to wrong things and they'll, they'll move away. And Mark eleven twenty four says the things that you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you'll have them. And the 25th verse says, if anybody has offended you, forgive them. Let them go. People have done very evil things, but you need to forgive and rise above. I prophesy right now that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is going to rise. New anointing is falling. New mantles are falling. New glory is falling. New oil is falling. New power is falling. The hand of God is upon us. He's going to raise people up to lead people in the right way, the true and the living way. Amen. And, and the, Lord, the Lord is going to just anoint people. They're going to, there's going to be more. There always were more of us than there are, were, are, are of them. But God's going to neutralize the forces of darkness. Revival comes when three things. Love, unity, and power. Listen to me. Love, unity, and power. I'm seeing that starting to happen in our day. A lot of love between people, between the brethren. And this is when you know the Holy Spirit's moving. And a lot of unity, and then that brings power. Psalm 133 is a great psalm. It says, The oil came upon the head of Aaron, the priest, and began to run down his hair, down to his beard. Uh, I have a lot of that, so I could use a lot of oil, right? Yeah. It comes down, and then it goes down. <laughs> it goes down into the body, and then the Lord says, Where there's unity, I'll command my blessing. So where there's disunity... Divisions, diversions, manipulations, that, that's where the Lord is not moving, the devil is working. The Bible also says where there's strife, there's every evil work. There's confusion in every evil work. And this happens all the time. People full of hatred, people full of manipulations, even witchcraft, the work of the flesh, according to Galatians 5. Uh, the bad fruit, there's the good fruit of the spirit, patience, long-suffering, you know, on and on. Philippians 4 8 says, If there be any virtue, any praise, anything good, anything that's lovely, just, honest, of good report, think on these things. But the fruit of the Spirit is beautiful, but the works, the fruits of the works of the flesh are something else. And manipulation, where people try to take their voice and put it over people, even pastors and churches that want to manipulate people and all that. Let me tell you something at the end, I wouldn't want to be with them because the, it's not going to be good. The judgment of God is true. It's real. We're going to account, 
And God needs real, true, loving people that are full of the Holy Ghost. This is our compass. This is our guide. This is, this is the truth that sets men free, that makes men free. Amen. And uh, so uh, we, we need to understand that. I found some scriptures in here that talked about how God would send um, someone from far away. Isaiah 55 verse 4. A leader and a commander, I'll make you amongst the people. And the people you do not know, you'll call them into order. I have experienced that. A man sent to the east uh, from a far country to help people, you know. And Isaiah 60 verse 11, 10, 11 says, A foreigner shall build up your walls. A lot of people claim that is like, I, 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 have a, I have a desire to have something, so a foreigner is going to come and build for me. But what about looking at it re, in, re, in reality, what it says? A foreigner will be sent to build up your walls. Why does God send a foreigner? Why does God send an American? I, I'm, I'm not, I don't consider myself just an American. I say I'm a, I'm a global citizen in the 21st century church. The world is my place. I'm, I'm across all the nations. I'm a global ministry. I'm a global person. But why does God send me? Because I'm neutral. Because I'm not biased. Uh, Archbishop Harrison Nanga, who we love so dearly, by the way, he wrote the foreword to my book here, and you can get a copy of this that'll be uh, offered, a very special offer, crazy low price for the viewers now, and the conferences we're in going, going on right now, but he wrote a forward here, but he was telling all the other leaders the other day, we were together, I was speaking in his conferences uh, uh, many times, and he said, people were biased, so God had to send a true prophet that had no bias, had no like affiliation with anyone, just to speak what's on heaven's mind. Now, this list of prophecies, if I can, just give me this real quick. I don't. I didn't really feel like reading it, but in case we missed a few, uh, the superhighway. And I just found this in my office, by the way. I wasn't looking for this, but it just kind of fell out of a file or something, and there it was. I was like, "Whoa, look! I was looking for this." Mm-hmm. And this is just three pages of just like one point prophecies. The Thika Superhighway. Do you know that road? It was there was nothing there. And in two thousand seven, the Lord had me prophesy that there was going to be built this great thing, the new expressway that goes across the city of Nairobi. Have you seen it? The Lord spoke that the SGR train lines to run the trains across the whole country. And the Lord says right now that tourism is coming back. I've already seen them coming back. I've looked in the malls. I've seen the Wazungus. Is that what you call them? The Wazungus are everywhere. Yes. They're coming back mm-hmm. the last few weeks. We didn't mm-hmm. see them like the last few months. All of a sudden now, they're just starting to reappear. Mm-hmm. Whole groups of them. Because God wants to bless the economy, but He also wants them to be blessed. To come to see His beautiful creation. What you call the Big Five. You know, the, the Ndobus and the Simbas and the Twigas and the... Uh, Malia, what? Chewy. Chewies and what, what's the other one? The zebras or what? Bunga Malia. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, enjoy the beautiful nature. Kenya's a beautiful country, but man and devils have really made a mess of a lot of things, and God is tired of it. Let's lift our hands right now and pray and prophesy over the nation. God, you're going to begin to do this also all across Africa, all across East Africa. You're going to begin to cause... Yeah, the Lord said development of other Kenyan cities. You know, the Lord, the angel of the Lord came to me in an open vision. I was speaking in the Kuru in a conference, and the angel put the document in my hand, and I saw it was a constitution, like an official thing, thick, thick file. And it said Nakuru City, the, the institution of the Nakuru City. And the angel put it in my hand in a vision, and I slapped it down on the pulpit. The power of God went off all throughout the, the congregation of the meeting we were having. It was a leaders meeting in the Kuru uh, at the ACK conference hall place, whatever that, whatever, that, whatever that is. And I got to go through the mount, up the mountain in the game park and see all the animals. It was so wonderful. And um, one year later to the day, the same Friday, it was the, I remember, I never can forget, the first Friday of December, was when I prophesied that, that Nakuru would become a city. And one year later, exactly the same first Friday of December, 
At the same time I was speaking, about 11 o'clock in the morning, about the same time, President Uhuru Kenyatta came to sign the charter of the city to become the Kuru city. I'm hearing already that there's new development happening. Machakos got developed. Chuka, a little town called Chuka, got developed. There were dirt roads. Now it's all paved. They've built new buildings, hotels, universities, just as the Lord says. So the prophetic voice is a building spirit, not a destroying spirit, Mm -hmm. not a manipulating spirit. It's a pro- Blessing for humanity to break people loose, to deliver them, to anoint them and empower them that they can begin to have a a great and prosperous life. Let's lift our hands right now. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven. Also, the Lord is destroying poverty. There's 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 so many changes. Economic statuses are coming higher. And there's also going to be the re... Uh, people coming out from places of bondage and getting into freedom. We're seeing it happen. I was with Archbishop Harrison uh, on Friday night for the Keisha, the all-night uh, prayer meeting, and he had me speak uh, to open it up that night. And then when he came on at midnight, uh, he began to get a word from the Lord to break people loose from manipulations even from false religious leaders. Can you imagine? And he went through the crowd and laid hands on a couple of thousand people at least. And people were falling everywhere. He said, is a reset back to the original plan that God had. But men were diverted because of evil spirits, evil forces, even people in ministry, even churches, even men that say they're men of God or or women of God that were wrong, that have put things on people. It's evil. And I'm telling you right now, God wants to break people loose that they can have the greatest life. You're supposed to be living the life of the Garden of Eden. Everything prosperous, everything abundant, everything blessed. Are you getting blessed by hearing me? This is the word of the Lord to empower people, to raise them up. And the Lord says, I'm fixing things behind the scenes for you, my people. I'm working on things for you. You're going to begin to see my hand in these days like you've never seen. I prophesy this last half of this year will be the best months of your entire life. Manifestations of promises, fulfillments of blessings. The Lord's going to begin to bring it to you. You're going to begin to see the breakthrough now in Jesus' name. Uh, We have so much more, but it's limited time. But back over to you, my beloved host. Ask whatever questions you'd like. Let's just flow here. Yes, thank you. Somebody so. write an amen on the social media if you got that. Someone write an amen and a hallelujah. And share this link with everybody. Yes. Take it on your WhatsApp and SMS and shoot it out to all your friends. Amen. Amen. So thank you so much, uh, Prophet Thomas. And God bless you so much. I can see you, Mwangi. You're saying hallelujah. God bless you so much. We are live on our Facebook page. That is All 10 TV. And also we are live in the page of uh, the guest today, Thomas Manton. It's good to go and check on Thomas Manton the fourth. We are live there too. And also we are live in my page, If Buru the Game Changer. We have our SMS number. That is 7 Thank you so much, Mr. Patrick and your family. Uh, you're saying that you are following us and you are being blessed. Say hi to your family is so much. God bless you. I had told uh, the prophet to just let us understand prophecy. And I love the way he has put it that he uses scriptures. And it's the Holy Spirit who breathes whatever he says, the mind of God in him so that a prophet can speak. And I asked him, how will we know the true prophet? And the answer he gave me is that if you're true, you're true. If you're right, you're right. If you have the Holy Spirit, you're going to go. And I felt like that confidence from the Holy Spirit is the confidence that's, that we need as the body of Christ. And as uh, we were talking, I know that there is at this season when I see that there is a lot of hunger for the Christians today and in the body of Christ. You find that a lot of people are going and trying to look for where they can find the true word of God. And therefore, you find them falling in wrong hands. Uh, so what is this that God is saying for Kenya or for the body of Christ in Kenya right this the morning? The Holy Spirit's leading you. It's the most awesome question. Let me answer it. Yes. This is the day when God's going to begin to raise his own servants and promote them and elevate them 
and mega churches are going to be made. Places that can take thousands of people. Because the Lord said from last month, June, that revival has broken loose. I prophesied this a year ago in this city. I was by Nation Center in a building. And I remember that time it was very dry. The city was dry. Churches had collapsed. It was a mess. Uh, it was bad. And the Lord said, I'm releasing a new movement of mine into the city of Nairobi, Kenya. And it's going to go out through Nairobi, out all over Kenya, all over East Africa, all over Africa, and let's just say to the entire world. And when I said it, it didn't seem like it was really happening yet. But a year later now, that was last August, 2022. Yes. Now, coming on to a year later, we're seeing manifestation we just had meetings, a fresh oil conference last week with Bishop, Archbishop Harrison uh, had, and I spoke in that conference. He had me speak in that conference. It was so powerful. And hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pastors and leaders were there. And the word that God gave me for them was, stop hating your brother. Stop being a competitor to another man. Build your own. Have love. The code word is love. You know, the Spirit of God is the Spirit of love. God is love and love is God. Yes or yes? I didn't give you the chance to say no because you can't say no. This is true. God is love. And if you don't have love for your brethren, then what spirit are you of? You know, if you want to build your own thing to aggrandize yourself, that's the road to, to destruction because God is not in that. The, the, the ministry is to lift people up. What did Jesus do? Let's follow him as the, as the premier example. He, 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 uh, Acts 10, 38. God anointed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. Uh, Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To what? To help them get delivered. To bring favor. Isaiah 61 also said it. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to help people, to bless them, to break them through. So there's a movement happening now where I'm seeing leaders beginning to come together. This entire month I've been in conferences back to back, day to night. In fact, earlier I was a bit tired. I went to a meeting this morning with a bunch of leaders from uh, <coughs> in Kiambu. And uh, they're very excited to, to hear me, but I dashed out before they could get me. So tomorrow we're going to speak in that meeting. And hundreds of leaders are there. They're ready. I'm seeing something happening. They're ready to receive from God. And thank God that God raises up His own elect servants. If you want to serve God, you need to get filled with the Holy Ghost and His power. Learn the Word. Rightly divide the Word of truth. Become a teacher of the Bible. No matter what office you're in, evangelist, pastor, teacher, prophet, apostle, I see a lot of people calling themselves apostle, and I don't know why they take the title. I've always believed that an apostle is someone who's blazed enough trails in the other office that they were in first, mm -hmm. that they kind of get promoted and they carry power to blaze a trail. Don't dare call yourself an apostle if you've not even built a ministry. You've not even proven yourself. You, God hasn't used you enough to touch millions of people. My voice has reached multiplied countless millions of people. Even in the nation of Kenya, there are millions of people that are aware of the prophecies I've given. One prophecy about the election in 2007, got, we got over 4 million hits on my website just from that one prophecy, 4 million hits. And hundreds of thousands of people have come through our events so it's obvious. If you want to call me a prophet, it's because that's what I do. I'm not taking a title unto myself. If you call me doctor because I have a doctorate in divinity, that's fine. Call me doctor. Call me doctare. Call me prophet. But it's by the function that I'm functioning in. So if you're an evangelist or a pastor, you're a pastor, be a good pastor. You're an evangelist, be a good evangelist. You're a prophet, be a good prophet. And leave the titles alone. You know, the Bible even says if a, de a man desires to be a bishop, he desires a good work, but it's an office ordained, uh, uh, sanctioned by man, okay? And then you have these seven qualifications that you have to follow if you want to be a good bishop. 
But the Ephesians 4.11, where Jesus called and ordained fivefold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, that, that was from the election of God himself. So the calling of God will come, and it, it, he will bear witness of it himself to speak to multitudes of people. And that's really what the prophetic office is all about. I hope I've helped you understand that. Yes. The mantle of the prophet is a powerful mantle. Mm -hmm. It's upon me, a governmental mantle. You know, there's a, word, or there's a realm when you can speak word of knowledge to people and tell them informational things, and that's great. That's the flow of the prophetic. But the highest, or the highest level in the office of the prophet is when you speak to nations, societies, continents, societies, governments, people, groups. And that's a very, very high calling. The price of walking in that, I, I, don't, I want to tell you it's too expensive. It's too expensive. I wouldn't wish it. Uh, some things I've gone through, maybe on an enemy, never mind a friend. Mm -hmm. So if you, you you say you want to be great in the kingdom, mm -hmm. oh wow, you there's have a here. price to pay. Oh yes, there is a process. First the price, yes. Then the prize. First the process, then the, the promotion. <laughs> One doesn't come before the other. So if you want to serve, Jesus said, deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Yes. But he also said in Luke twelve forty nine. I want my fire to be moving in the earth. So we need to see the fire of the Holy Ghost. Father, manifestations of your power is what we need. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, across the airwaves right now, wherever people are watching. Touch them with your fire right now. Amen. Release your fire upon them right now. Amen. Release anointings upon people yeah. that they too could be raised up Amen. to do your works, Amen. Lord Jesus. And we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for touching about uh, the process, the price, because the next question I needed to ask you all, I was planning to ask you is about the preparation, because already Christ wants to come and uh, bring revival in Kenya. What about sure preparing does. the church? What are these preparations? What are these Christians should be ready for? Because when there is preparations, there is work done. There are things that you have to live as a Christian. There are things that you have to take. There are things that you don't like, but you have to do them because you are being prepared for the process. There are Christians who have been in church for uh, some years, uh, decades of years, and yet the Christ is saying he's coming to prepare the church that we have been in church. What is this preparation that yes, Christ is talking about? Beautiful to? questions. I got, hey, everybody, give the Lord a hand for our hostess. She's just, she's just so on. The question is just because I have the answer already. It's like you're asking. Uh, okay, now myself, I tell my own testimony. I have done everything in the church. I drove. I sang, I cleaned, I ushered, I served for years. God was preparing me. And another thing I always did was whenever I saw a man that, or, or, or a woman sometimes that had a real powerful anointing, and I would, I would always ask them to lay hands on me. And I was always receiving impartations because you need to be filled with God. If you're going to be a voice that's going to speak, to nations and to people, you you know, you have to be full. But the servanthood process, we're all servants. The way up in the kingdom is the way down. If you can't serve first, how are you going to do anything else? Let me give you scripture for that. Jesus said, if you're not faithful in that which is another man's, who will give you your own? Basically, the question was rhetorical. He was saying, uh, who will give you your own? He's really saying, not me. Yeah. And the wise virgins and the foolish virgins. Remember that parable in Matthew 25. There were ones that didn't prepare themselves. They didn't have the oil. They weren't filled. And then the door closed and they couldn't do anything. But the ones that had it were able to get through. Remember the four lepers that were in uh, 2 Kings 6 and 7. 7, I think. They were, they were sitting there and they were saying, what do we do? And they said, God, give us a strategy. And they broke the pots and made noise and caused confusion on the enemy. And they all kill, turned and killed themselves. And then they were able to take all these things like that. They got a strategy from God. Because they were lowly. They weren't the high and the mighty. They were sitting there and they said, God, touch me. I love Psalm 24. I think it's Psalm 24. It says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. It's Psalm 24, Psalm 34, I can't remember. So, uh, God also said in... 
Through the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 57, 15, a broken and a contrite heart and spirit I won't despise. You know, you you got to get broken and let God begin to fill you. Now you become a humble servant and a humble vessel. The greatest in the kingdom are the ones that have the most humility. What is humility? It's being one with God, knowing that he's the source. We're always giving him the credit. We don't take the credit for ourselves. So, you want to go up? You got to first go down. Be a servant. God can raise you and take you up. Wow, thank you so much. You have to serve, you have to be humble for you to be lifted up. So for the, that moment, uh, all of us in Kenya, like the believers, you're saying the revival is here, the revival has come, but are you <coughs> ready? Have you served first for God to use you? That is the question that you should be asking yourself right now. So thank you so much. And uh, now in this journey of prophecy and in the office of prophet, uh, this this spirit that we pray for every day as every believer prays for the spirit of discernment eh? uh, there is is there a difference between discernment and suspicion because yes. sometimes <coughs> we suspect that dr thomas Han manton the fourth is not right but that's just suspicion and there's now the spirit of design. I don't know how anybody could be that foolish, but I'll forgive you. It's okay. <laughs> no. Just, Can you I'll tell us? You anyway. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between suspicion and uh, discernment? Yeah, there is. Suspicion is of the head, of the mind. And discernment is of the spirit. Mm -hmm. The word discern means to see. Discern means to see. You see. From here. So, uh, and also you go by how you feel. You ever meet someone and you feel they're, they're creepy, something's not right. You feel like something going on inside of you, like something's not right with them. That's a bad, that, that's a warning to you that that's not a good person. And then you see someone else and you just feel so good. You feel so uh, free, you know. That's, that's, that's a feeling of the spiritual nature. Okay. So suspicion could, go be, could be based on what you thought you knew or what someone else said or not necessarily true mm -hmm. but the holy ghost always bears witness of his own okay. he'll tell you who's who and what's what yeah uh, viewers thank you so much i've asked that question because uh in these times that we are living we have a lot of questions about the office of prophecy, but we know that uh, if Jesus said in the book of Ephesians chapter 4 that uh, he has equipped, given a psalm to, now he mentioned the fivefolds. And now if he mentioned the fivefolds, it means that <coughs> without the prophets, the church is not complete. If you have the apostles, you have the pastors, you have the teachers and you have the evangelists, it means that without the prophets, the church is not complete. So that, that does not rule out the prophets in our day church, in our today's church because we really need them and that is why in the New Testament, I'm not talking about the Old Testament, it is in the New Testament, it's a gift of the, of the Holy Spirit and we really need to know that there is an office of prophecy, um, of a prophet that is really working under the control of the Holy <coughs> Spirit. God bless you so much our viewers, let me recognize You did it again, let me, let me jump in here while, oh. you, while you're looking that up. Alright. Ephesians 2.20 said the foundation of the church is built on the apostles and prophets. Yes. So they're the two highest offices in the church. Mm -hmm. The evangelist and the pastor and the teacher are not higher. The highest is the apostle and the prophet. And the apostle and the prophet can work together, of which Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. Another one, 1 Corinthians 12.28, he said, For I gave first apostles, secondarily prophets. Yeah. Thirdly, teachers, then the working of miracles, and then these other offices in the church, which are very important, three offices that people hardly ever talk about, helps, governments, and administrations. Government administration could be a similar word, it's like the same word. Just like pastor and teacher is the same Greek word. Yeah. A pastor is always a teacher, but a teacher is not always a pastor. Yes. But a pastor must always be a teacher. A That's word. why Paul put it in, I guess, in the Greek word, uh, whatever the Greek word was for a pastor and teacher is the same. So, apostles and prophets are the foundational uh, 
power gifts that build and blaze trails and begin to go. So when we prophesy, like, here's just a little list of, if there's, there's more, there's hundreds of prophecies I've given, mm -hmm. by the way. I have one book ca called Healing the Soul of the Society. It's 250 prophecies for Kenya. And it turned out, the book turned out to be 250 pages. We didn't plan that. 250 prophecies, and the book turned out to be 250 pages. We've sold out of that, but we have to go to reprint and uh, another printing on that. But the Lord began to speak about how he wants to... It's a very, very fierce book. It's very, very profound, very detailed about dealing with the society, even corruption. Let me tell you something else the Lord said through me that I've never heard anyone else really say. He said, I'm releasing an anti-corruption move from heaven in the nation of Kenya to combat corruption. And he said, I want the next generation to rise that they won't know the things that the former, this generation and the previous have known as far as corruption. God is going to keep dealing with it and uh, keep exposing corruption. I don't know a time when I've ever seen so many people caught stealing from the government and the, the, the monies and all that and doing all kinds of corrupt deals and they're being exposed. God said that's going to turn up, it's going to go higher because God wants to clean the society. And the last place you really think that you should find corruption is in the church, but it is also there. So the Holy Spirit is dealing with, is dealing with those things. And um, God wants to just release fire. Like when we prophesy... It's a creative force that creates things. So you want to know true prophecy? What happened when it was spoken? Did it bless you? Did you at least feel something? Did it confirm something that God was already dealing with you about? Did it create something good? Was kind of mashallah, I feel it right now. Was there a result of something good? That's when you know the Lord is speaking. Amen. That's a simple way. Isn't it a simple answer? A simple mm. way that people can know. What is coming out of the word that came? Is it, direct, is it helping you move to greater pastures and higher heights? Is it manifesting? Is it carrying power to create things for you? You want to mean that any prophecy that is revealed by a prophet and it's bringing division, maybe in the family, because sometimes you find a person telling you that the prophet told me that my aunt bewitched me, my grandmother bewitched me, so you what, what? So you find that it is that. bringing, uh, it's bringing division in the family. So and Archbishop was saying in the meeting Friday, Archbishop Harrison, Nanga, mm -hmm. my dear uh, papa and friend, now he said. People have said, like, you'll never marry. If that person left the church, they curse them. You're never going to succeed. That's nonsense. That's the devil. That's the devil. The Holy Spirit would never do. Let, let, let me give you a real... I like, I like that the Holy Spirit gives me these, these analogies. That you can, yeah, I can make it real simple for you. Would a loving father or mother curse his own children and hurt them? No. So can God do that? No. He'll only empower you and love you and bless you. And correct you. So thank you so Corrects much. Correct you, but help you to, because of the purpose of helping you get somewhere. Yes. Even God's judgment, when it comes, is not meant for destruction, it's meant for redemption. That's true. Because it's, it's taking out the wickedness and changing things for the better, ultimately. That's what God has in his mind. Wow. Thank you so much. I hope you're listening and you're following up and now you can understand better that the Holy Spirit of God, when a prophet prophesies, it must be a build, it must build, like build your life, build the church, build the society. That is the true prophecy. Hallelujah. Tuned from rocks. I am Mama Shiko and family. Thank you so much. Uh, the price, then the prize. The process, then the promotion. I am Patrick Irongo watching from Kayole. Thank you One so more. much. One more, you ready? Yes. Your environment will either pollute you or promote you, depending on what it is. Wow. The friends and people you have around you can take you out to uh, deep waters where it's dangerous, or they could bring you into a safe harbor, depending on which way they're going. So you always have to watch who you surround yourself with. You need good leaders, you need good pastors, you need loving people, you need people that can help you and not hinder you. Father, I just speak this word like fire 
that you will break people out from wrong relationships, things that are hindering them and binding them. Of course, I'm not talking about family or marriage. Once you, you know, it's a funny thing. Once you say, I do, you can't say, I don't. Yes. You made a choice. Now mm. you got to deal with it. You did. And uh, Archbishop was saying that, like some people have even said, you'll never marry, or someone could say that you're with the wrong one. He even did a teaching. I really liked it. He said, uh, you're grown. You're a grown person. Don't ask me. Follow the Holy Spirit. Let him lead you. Yes. Because the Spirit of Lord will lead us and guide us into all truth. And as we continue in his word, th this book right here, we are his disciples indeed. So... Um, the power of God is going to liberate you from wrong environments. He's going to put you into companies of great people. Even Psalm 68 says, the solitary one he'll put into families. He'll begin to cause people to love them. You need people to love you, celebrate you. People that build you up, not tear you down. And then you can begin to build. And as the whole church, uh, corporately, of all the whole body of Christ, but also... In, each individual begins to walk into success and blessing and breakthrough, then everybody becomes better. Every joint supplies. And the scripture says, when one hurts in the body, the whole body suffers. So we need to see all these disjointedness, derision, destruction, devastation, distraction, delay, all kinds of witchcraft, all kinds of wrong decrees, we need to take that all and say, back to sender, back to the devil. Shaitani a shindwe, you Amen. devil, you are a loser. Yes. There's only one place you ever have for all eternity. It's not over our head or around us. It's so under the, our uh, feet. feet. Jesus gave us the victory 2,000 years ago. Yes. And we have it forever. Amen. And the Lord is going to begin to empower people and break you loose from every oppressive environment, every oppressive situation, whatever bondage the devil has put on you through other people, you need to get out of that. Now, one, one thing in closing here, I know we only have a minute or two left, but the Lord says, Isaiah fifty four seventeen. every word that comes against you, you condemn it, you reverse it, you overturn it, you send it back to sender. I prophesy... And declare this, that we are never going to be the end user of anybody's evil that's been thrown against us. We will overcome it. The Holy Ghost will turn it away from us. And we will be free and victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, Amen. if you'd like to get the book before we go, I think you can also talk about this. Yes. Uh, should we give out a phone number? Yes, I will give them the phone number. Okay, 706 one six four one nine one in Kenya plus two five four if you'd like to communicate with us plus two five four seven oh six one six four one nine one and uh, you can write a WhatsApp you could write a, a message whatever and if you'd like to get this book we'll let you know how to get it we have to do uh, this is just our first program here we need to do another program we yes. can talk about this book, because this book is very powerful. Yes. By the way, the foreword was written by Archbishop Harrison K. Dr. Har uh, Harrison K. Nanga, and uh, he wrote three pages about me and our ministry. It's brilliant. Wow. And uh, we just uh, published the next printing of this. It's just phenomenal on success, the laws of success. And as you get a copy and go through it, your life will be transformed, I'm telling you. So we'll figure out a way that you all can get it. But uh, if you'd like to give out your numbers too, you can order it from here from the studio. And we'll figure out how they can have some copies. You can get them. And I'm very grateful for the CFF family. Can we give the Lord some praise? Um, the Archbishop and uh, the Bishop of this house uh, on this side of town and all the other great uh, men, of, uh, men and women of God that are in that organization. God bless you. I love you all.
Thank you so much, Dr. Mount Tom the Fourth. Uh, let me recognize our viewers very fast. Double J family, we are totally tuned. Amen. Hallelujah. Mama Mwangi DMK in Joro Bible College. Thank you so much. Amen. I am being blessed. Thank you so much. You didn't say your name. I can see Gashao Mother, you're saying amen and amen. The power of God liberates you from wrong company. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for following and also getting what we are talking about in the studio. Thank you so much Monica Mwekari. Wow, powerful. Be blessed servant of God. God will God will never curse you. He's our father. That's a true prophecy. Correct. Wow. Thank you so much Martha. <laughs> a pastor John Blessed CFF. I am tuned. God bless you man of God. Suzraim Karina Hari. Powerful message here. Hallelujah. Uh, Martha, I can see you. Hallelujah. Mokami ZP. Hallelujah. Lucy Wangare. Amen. Uh, Christine new to you saying you tuned uh, our Reverend uh, Reverend uh, Daniel Gitahi. That is our CEO in All Time TV. You're saying hallelujah. God bless you so much. Ambishiro, you're saying hallelujah. Zipi Karis, hallelujah. Chibole Tabriz, amen. John Karoki, amen. Uh, thank you so much. You're listening. A Christian Foundation Fellowship, Upande Wazabezi, Pastor Duku. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Mother, the word of God is our guide in our lives. Amen. Victorious V, I am tuned. Ambishiro, tuned from Kikuyu. Thank you so much. Hey, live victorious. I am tuned. Hapa usiposkiza vizuri, vizuri ita kupita i say <laughs> but we give god all the glory because of the anointing <laughs> of english <laughs> mokavi uh, zp glory to god esther maxton holmes hallelujah i am watching from kayore <coughs> junction uh, tuned in waiting to hear what god has prepared for us through prophet manton he's a true prophet of god karibu sana na karibu tena much, yes we're going to plan for another show yes and for the next show, we are going to talk about this book. This book uh, it talks about prophetic keys to successful living. And now because we have understood that uh, a prophet is one of the five-fold ministries that has been lacking in the society, we are going to talk about the keys, prophetic keys uh, to successful living. And I know God will bless us so much. And now I want to repeat the number where you can be able to order a copy. And today he has decided to give an offer of 500 Kenyan shillings. If you order this book today all through this program, you just say that you just watched that through this program, you're going to get this book with 500 Kenyan shillings. And our phone number is 706 706 164 Nine one zero seven zero six one six four one nine one, and on the screen you can see our studio number that is zero seven one one nine zero seven six seven six. That is our studio number. In case you would uh, you call this number and you don't get them, just text and say that you are watching us on this show and you need this book and we shall direct you and you shall get a copy may our god bless you so much for watching and for following as i am if i yes the number on the screen zero seven zero six one sixty four one nine one yes already i can see the number on your screen if you look on your screen even on online yes, apple yes. facebook you shall see our that number there you can order this book 500 kenya shillings if you order it and you was watching this special edition you shall get it with 500 kenya shillings but if not from here it's a thousand kenyan shillings right. so now you can just uh, talk to us you know that's a good deal from uh, Prophet Dr. Thomas. So thank you so much, Prophet Dr. Thomas from New York uh, for being good to us. We met, we welcomed him and he came. He honored the invite and we thank you and give God all the glory and may God continue using you more and more. Thank you very much. Yes, and I hope that you're going to come back some yes, other time. Yes, of course. Yes. Before you leave, he's going to come back and we are going to have a talk about the prophetic keys to successful living. So thank you. God bless you so much, our viewers. I'm going to give you two minutes yeah. so that you talk to the viewers. <clears throat> you just prophesy to the viewers according to the scripture and our God will bless us. Let's lift our hands. Father, thank you for your healing fire. I just released miracles. Healing miracles, deliverance miracles, Amen. breakthroughs financially in all kinds of ways. Things that are going to happen that you've not seen, manifestations of promises, things that you dreamed about. The Lord says, I'm going to begin to 
quicken the time now and I'm going to accelerate things. The Lord says, I'm fixing things behind the scenes for you. I'm working on issues that you couldn't fix yourself. Now, we need to be very aggressive and take action in the visions that God gives us and direction He gives us on what to do. Strategies He gives us, ideas He gives us, we need to make them into, literally into businesses, industries, workable things. Even people in the ministry can have creative ways of doing things and presenting things. But the things that you can't seem to fix for yourself, I tell you by the Holy Ghost, God is fixing things for us behind the scenes. Those things that we can't figure out enough, we can't fix them enough. People are too stubborn. Too many things are going this way and that way. The Lord is our loving Father, and He's going to cause things to happen for us. He's Jehovah Jireh. Let me give you a Hebrew definition of the Hebrew word Yireh or Jireh, J-I-R-E-H, which is one of the names of Jehovah. People use it to say, well, it's the God who provides or helps me, takes care of me financially, whatever. But the Hebrew definition of Jireh, there's a very deeper meaning to it. They said, he's the father and overseer, our overseer, who sees our future and will see to it that it happens. The Lord is the one who can manifest the promises. And I pray and declare right now, That God is accelerating that in the lives of his precious people. Few things you need to do. You need to be a tither. You need to be a giver. You need to be a lover. I don't mean physically. I mean spiritually. I mean with with people. You you need to get the the mind of God and begin to take action on it. You need to find out the original purpose of what God ordained for you to be doing and get busy about it. Isaiah 119 says, If you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured. You have to be careful. Without a vision, Proverbs 29.18, it says, Without a vision, the people perish, which means to slowly deteriorate, as well as just to drop off. So, you need to grab a hold in this day with passionate fire of what God wants you to be doing and get on with it. But those things that you can't fix for yourself, the Lord says, I'm going to help you in it. Father, I release also healing miracles. Anywhere you have pain in your body, put your hand on yourself right now. I declare healing for you right now. Healing is coming to your house right now. What you need physically, financially, emotionally, relationally, Work-wise, employment-wise, new jobs, I declare. New vehicles, I declare. New homes, I declare. New favor, I declare. New businesses, I declare. Breakthroughs in markets, in arenas of your business life. God is going to empower you to begin to flow with Him and begin to flourish and be blessed. Breakthrough in every area, every oppression that you've had. Let it be broken right now. I feel the anointing here. In Jesus' name, receive deliverance right now where you are. And the Lord bless you, my friends, and we'll see you next time. Amen. Love you much. (laughs) Yes, thank you so much. God bless you, our viewers. We love you so much. Thank you so much. I can't forget my crew in the studio. I have John Maina as my floor manager. I also have Tom Quay and CP Mokami on the other side. I also have the manager, Mr. Maigi, in the studio. Thank you so much, our viewers. We love it because of you that we are here. Continue talking to us and engaging us, and I know God is going to bless you so much. I am Eve Buru, and I want us to share the grace and may the grace of our Lord Lord Jesus Christ yeah. and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Have a good night. You are watching All Time TV. Let heaven fill your mind.